Hello and welcome to episode number 168 of The Shine Show. Today's episode is called Managing Your Money as a Small Business Owner with the wonderful Launch Lounge member Darcy Milfelt. Darcy of Green Bites Project is a financial wellness coach helping women hit their biggest financial goals from small business finance to personal finances. She is a former SVP of Bank of America and holds an MBA from the University of Texas at Austin. She used her love of numbers to map out her family's own financial independence journey, which they hit in their late 30s. Darcy has worked with over 400 women on their finances and pinches herself nearly every day that she gets to cheer them on as they forever change their money story. And I am so happy to bring you Darcy Milfelt today as she shares with you how you can transform your money story as a small business owner. Giving up your time and freedom to make money is so 2009. Hi, I'm your host, Salome Shellac, and I help online course creators launch, grow, and scale their businesses with Facebook and Instagram ads so that they can make more money and have an even bigger impact in the world. If you're ready to be inspired to dream bigger, launch sooner, and grow your online business faster, then tune in because you are ready to shine And this is The Shine Show. Darcy, thank you so much for joining me today. I am very excited to talk to you. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here. Longtime listener, longtime fan. So thank you so much for having me. Of course. And uh, and you have been inside the Launch Lounge for a while now. You've actually, you started in Mm A-Lister. Yes, I did. And then launch lounge, and then you're in one of my VIP launch loungers. Yes, yes. And it's been such a treat to be there. Oh, it's been such a treat to see your journey. I am so honored. I genuinely sometimes have to pinch myself that I get to hang out with smart women like you. Like, oh, stop. <laughs> oh, it is just, it's just delightful for me. You're so smart and so talented. I'm in awe of you. So I'm really, really, really happy that you're here to come and uh, share your journey with my listeners today, but also to share with them a little bit about how they can get their finances in order. And I can already hear a lot of them going, oh, maybe I should turn it (laughs) off. I don't want it. I'd rather just be like an ostrich and stick my head in the ground and not think about finances. Absolutely. Yeah. And I can say I've been there and um, there's definitely joy at the other end of facing the pain of sorting out your finances. But you take the pain out of that. So um, yes, yes, definitely. It's a tool. It's a tool. It's a tool. That's right. It's a tool, but it's a tool that we all get very emotional about, right? Oh yeah. Every single day, there are so many women that I work with that the finances are there's so many emotions that come in with it. Shame, guilt, Mm. I should be doing more with it and so on. And I I think that what is so neat is to be able to see that switched around, like even the reframing around money um, so that it's actually a part of your life design, the tools, and it actually becomes something that you are in control of and that you get to decide what you do with it and even how you spend your time too, as funny as that sounds. I, I love that that we've just dived right into this mindset thing about money. I kind of remember um, almost automatically allowing myself to become very disempowered around money when I got married. Mm-hmm. I uh, I don't for one second think it's you know the dude's fault. <laughs> <laughs> My husband is an amazing man, a wonderful man, but I think there's just something in the dynamic between men and women where we just take a back seat and the guys just run with it. And, uh, and it, it, it took me a while to kind of realize, hang on, I can actually empower myself here. So how do you see, how do you see women maybe without meaning to, without intending to, but maybe accidentally or or maybe it's not entirely their fault, disempowering themselves around money, which then brings about later the shame and the guilt and all the other things. Oh, that's a really good question. I I know 
I work with, you know, just all kinds of different people from those that are actually the ones that are in charge of their money in the relationship. And then there are people in the relationship that maybe they're like, I've had, I've had, you know, women say to me, my husband's a mess with money. I'm the one that's doing Mm -hmm. this. But as far as the disempowering, I I think that sometimes we're waiting almost for someone to kind of like come rescue us, or we assume that someone else knows more than we Mm -hmm. do. And we're maybe worried about making a decision with, or some kind of wrong decision with the money. And so therefore we're like, you know what, it's better if I just don't do anything. And, you know, someone else is much more equipped, but honestly, I think that we get those messages from society, right? I mean, even the way that at least here in the United States, I'm American, (laughs) but the way that things are structured here in the United States, we can't have certain conversations. There's so much regulation on it. So therefore it's almost like ingrained in us. Like you have to be super smart. You have to be super sophisticated, really good with numbers in order to be able to just, you know, kind of understand like what in the world you should invest in, in the first place. And so I think it creates maybe Mm -hmm. intentionally more distance between what we believe we can do versus, well, these other people are, you know, there's a whole industry devoted to this. What do I know in the first place? I'm, you know, as far as the, what I see every single day, I I think that it's so interesting of how just even technology has actually opened up more empowerment. If we allow it Mm -hmm. more empowerment to knowledge or just even, you know, other things that you can invest in without even thinking about it. And obviously this is not an investment show, but I I do think that it, if, if you um, were to get into what can I do that's actually within my control, I think it makes a, a big, big difference when it comes to money. Oh, I love that. What can I do that's actually in my control? Because we can all do something that's in our control today Mm -hmm. to do better with our finances or to just to lean in more, pay more attention, be more deliberate, be Mm -hmm. more like just um, know what's going on. I think that's probably um, one place to start because that's something we can all do is just look at our bank account, right? Tell me your story a little bit. I want to hear how did you go? Because you had a very impressive career and then uh, and then launched an online course. So tell me all, all, all how did you go? Why did why online course and why the one you did? Tell me that story. What in the world was I thinking? <laughs> yeah, so I, <laughs> I feel like how did I get here? I don't know. So I was a former senior vice president at Bank of America, got my MBA. And I was probably like a lot, maybe a lot of different people where I was in credit card debt for years and years and years. Then I went on to get an MBA, you know, close to six figures and student loan debt and then the new car too. So I, I did all of the things. No, it's a true story. Car. It's a true car. story. Yeah. And <laughs> an MBA um, comes with a new car. <laughs> so I, I think what was really interesting is that's and the reason why I bring up my own financial story and I'm very candid about it is because one, you have to know that this wasn't something that I was like, Hey, look at me. It's so amazing with money. In fact, and at least here in the United States, like I would say that I grew up a little bit more on the poor side Mm -hmm. with some of the, you know, government programs and things like that. Um, in, in, in just even with my own family dynamics, the way that they are, it's, it's so interesting to see, like literally called the American dream. I feel yeah. like I'm living because of the fact that, you know, what I've been able to do, but um, got into all the financial issues and tried so, so hard to work on my finances, but it just did not click at all for me. Mm. And it wasn't until, um, you know, many, many years later when I was in my thirties that I started to kind of figure out the budgeting sitting down, just like you just said, right. And like, okay, how does this actually work? What do I do? Do I make the phone calls? How do I get this together? And then it, once it clicked, it kind of took off from there for me in that I started to, you know, with things with my husband, um, he agreed to get out of my debt, (laughs) my student loan debt, my car loan debt that I brought into the marriage. And, I I think what was so great about that is that we went on to essentially just get into investing. I took a tax strategy class for here in the United United States. And I started to really like kind of understand how does this mutual thing work? And I kind of self-taught myself and used my husband's knowledge 
a lot too in my MBA of how does this all piece together and just did all the calculations and and all of that. And I, I kind of went down a rabbit hole with that. But I think what I th- always think is so interesting about finances and when I tell the women that I work with is that we don't really find it important to work on our finances until we almost find that thing that really, really drives us. Yeah. And so I got out of debt and I'm like, okay, that's nice. But what really, really put my finances into overdrive is that moment that I kind of discovered, wait a minute, you don't have to work until you're 70, hoping that you have a few good years left and you know your health and declining and all of that. I didn't want to be in corporate for like 40 years of my life to only have a little bit of a retirement. It just felt like it was like kind of like a waste of a life in a way, right? Because I wasn't happy. Like there are many, many people that I work with that are like, Mm -hmm. love their corporate jobs. They're good to go. Mm -hmm. But what, when November, 2013, I discovered this thing called financial independence, meaning you kind of build up your investments and you live off of a small portion of that. And it pays your bills for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Meaning retirement is a number, not an age. And when that happened, it like freaking blew my mind because I was like, wait a minute, I can buy back decades of my own life and do whatever I want. That's when finances really became meaningful to me. And so I just got to work. I like organized our finances. My husband let me just like do whatever I wanted to do with it. As long as he saw, you know, yeah. showed him the network statements and all yeah. that good stuff. So I'm really fortunate with that, that he was like, fine, fine, whatever makes you happy. And we ended up getting to a point where within the finances, we hit financial independence before we turned 40. My husband was able to leave his corporate job. I was able to be a stay-at-home mom for a couple of years when my kids were much, much younger um, upon like leaving the bank as a senior vice president. And I think that that's what's so interesting is we use money as a tool in order to kind of like really do life design, right? He got to do something he loves. I did. I was a stay at home mom. So I was super happy about that. And it wasn't until I started helping friends of a friends, friends of friends on their finances that I was like, Oh, maybe this random stuff that I know is actually helpful to other people. I got hit with an ad. (laughs) (laughs) It's a true story. (laughs) I got hit with an ad. Yeah. You should be. You should be hard with ads. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Everybody loves ads. You never know. Sometimes Mark Zuckerberg knows more than you do. Yeah, ads can <laughs> change do. lives. They do change lives for sure. And so I got hit with an ad in early February and I said, Hey, I think I want to try this thing out. And my husband's like, yeah, whatever you want to do. And I started working one-on-one with people. And I, when I got into a course within my program, I started this company and all of that. And it was because I found myself saying the same thing over and over again, to yeah. virtually every single client, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. Yeah. And so much of my own work was actually really framed by the default mortgage servicing work that I did over at Bank of America and seeing people in very interesting situations, also working with people that were like payday loans, which are extraordinarily high interest rate loans on literally on your paycheck. It's a terrible, terrible cycle to be in. People that were really paycheck to paycheck. I I mean, I saw a very, very different underside and, and it really started to like, bring about my own framework of like, we need to save guys. We need, we need to get going on savings. And that's what the the program that I created um, as a part of the digital course Academy in 2019 was uh, grow financially well. And it was on personal finances and how do we kind of get you from paycheck to paycheck to like loving your finances, getting them into a boring state, thinking about what is that space for you for how do you build your own financial independence journey And doing it in a way that's very loving, very much focused on like that acceptance of money and all of the emotional stuff that comes along with it. And that's kind of what sort of kicked off how you and I met, I'm sure, with that. So, and that's been a few years now that I've um, been running that program with um, close to 450 people in it right now. Uh, 450 students. That's fantastic. Well done. It's It's unbelievable. Honestly, unbelievable. I and I, I love how you know despite I want to say almost despite your your corporate career you know you're you make it so easy to understand you 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 know you speak like us you're a mom you're a <laughs> business owner like you know you, you just have this incredible knowledge that you just want to share and and I love that about how you, you know you're just you're just one of us I made a lot of mistakes yeah. I, oh, and I yeah. did all of the things, you know, and I think that that makes a big, big difference yeah. too, because yeah. um, it doesn't, I think sometimes we can be really, really intimidated by finances 
Right. And, and I think I like, while I do have an MBA and I know like classically, like all of the financial things, but I think what's really important is that at the end of the day, we're just talking about cash and how do we manage cash? And if, and I know for like a lot of case studies and people that I've worked with sometimes like my own process experience of working in corporate of like, Mm -hmm. how do we move around like a widget, right? If you think of money as a widget, it just, it, 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 you would be surprised at how much sometimes it's just, Hey, what if we just change the timing of things or what if we change when you're actually getting paid and, you know, just doing some of that stuff. And it, it actually doesn't, it just makes the world a difference when it comes to um, how we approach it. That's an amazing reframe. It's just, it's a widget and you just get to move around the widget. Love mm-hmm. that. And you can decide, you get to decide, yeah. like, I can't tell you, and I would never ever tell any of my clients like, oh, you should save more. You should pay off debt yeah. or whatever. It's like, yeah. what feels good to you? Yeah. Cause I wouldn't want anyone coming at me and saying you should do this. And I'm like, that's nice, but, <laughs> but this is what feels good to me. Right. Yeah. Because, and I think that's another thing too, about money is that we're all like bombarded with like debt is shameful. You know, you shouldn't be in debt. What's wrong with you. And then we, that leads into, I'm bad with numbers. I'm behind. I'm never going to get this. And you can kind of see that it just puts that distance between us and our money. And it's like, guys, the money is the tool that gets you the life that you want. You want to work less? It's through money. You want to be able to leave your corporate job? It's through money. Um, Vacation, you know, travel, all the things that you want to do. It's it's like, this is the thing that if you can embrace it and work through it, it's going to make such a difference for like your entire life. And I think that that's what's so funny about money is like, it can be life-changing, but not in like a greedy way or something like that. It's like, no, like, what if we did this for good? Yeah. And it, 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 it just changes everything. I love that. I love it. That's beautiful. And, and you have gone on from the uh, grow financially. Well, the program that you created for, it's just for, it's for any women, any woman Mm -hmm. who wants to take charge of her finance. Right. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. now you have niched down and created a second program Grow Financially Well, the small business edition, right? Mm-hmm, so right. tell us about how, so so you've worked with 400 and what women mm-hmm. and, and then you identified a need for small business owners. So tell me how that came about and, and what are the things that small business owners, women with small business owners specifically struggle with around finances? All right. So that came about because a lot of the different either clients that I had or women that came through Grow Financially Well had a business inevitably. And what I think was so fun about that is that, and again, sometimes it's just process things. Sometimes we are, you know, just trying to figure out timing of like when you get paid and when other bills have to be paid. And other times it was like a revenue thing that like, hey, we got to work on this other thing and then you'll be able to make more money. And anytime that I was working with anybody that had a business, we always started with their business finances, always, always, always. And so I would really recommend that to anybody who was like, oh, my personal finances are a mess. We've got to back up a few steps and take a look at the business finances first. Yeah. And then, yeah. and, and so it kind of came about from that. It's like, hey, but there's so much more I want to say about small business finances, because when you think about that timing, when you think about how do I allocate money back into my ad spend or for marketing, um, or just being able to feel like I can use my money in order to pay off debt, save and hit some of my other personal financial goals. It, it just became like, it's really obvious to create something else where I could use again, the same framework, but using it in a way where like, let's use your business to really grow wealth for you on your personal finance side. And I think as terms of the different like mistakes that that tend to come up, uh, I would say that one, we're focused on maybe a number that's not quite high enough in order to accommodate for taxes, at least here in, in the States. There are a lot of entrepreneurs that I know we're not setting aside money for taxes, right? We're like, oh, cool. I made $5,000, but that actually should be a little bit of a smaller pool. Yeah. I made that mistake once. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Once. That's not bad at all, right? Yeah, I think it's sometimes it's like, okay, I just need one time to learn that. But what would I, I I think what I see a lot is like we're we're so like we're almost underfunded when it comes to that that revenue. Um oh, yeah. and 
we're like focused on like, oh, I like I forget about the fact that I want to invest in things or I want to hire out or mm-hmm. I, you know, want to feel like I can you see the money pay coming myself. In, but you never know why there isn't any money. <laughs> I know, I know. And <laughs> and I think it when we kind of look at it a little bit differently and say, okay, what would what would it look like if you know I've had clients that are like, I want to pay myself weekly. And it's like, great, what are the sales that you're bringing in? Let's look ahead at your personal finances and make sure that they're communicating really well. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would be like another mistake is that a lot of times we're we're like, mm-hmm. oh, I don't want to pay attention to either one of them. And yeah. then we end up moving money back and forth between right. the accounts. Yeah. And, and we and we're not actually taking advantage of the fact of like, no, I want you to have like a true payday. Yeah. in your business. And, and I think every business owner should have that payday where you're like, oh my gosh, I this is the money that I brought in. I've accounted for the upcoming bills that are you know coming up in my business, paid for those, cash is set aside for that, paying my taxes, paying myself, mm, you yeah. know, the amount that I want to, but I also, I still feel like I can reinvest in my business that is going to continue to grow it. So yeah. that's, like that's definitely a big one. Like I said, the the personal finance and like just kind of keeping them as like um, separate until you start like moving money all around. And it's more yeah. like really, really reactive because what happens too is that we're, we're just so like, we're not being proactive enough with the leads too. Mm-hmm. Right. And so when we're not as proactive of like, what are the sales coming up and thinking about the cash that's coming in. And then that's when it creates, like, I just have to move money around because I got some bills due over here and like, I need the money out of my business. And I'm like constantly playing whack-a-mole between those two different accounts, which is a freaking nightmare. So that's why I always say like, anytime that I'm working with somebody, we work on the business finances first. So there's just a couple of things. Yeah. I love that. And also because the business is where you make money. Like that's the, you, you know, that's the fun bit. That's where you get to, to, to use your creativity to go, yeah, hang on. If I sell a little bit more of this, I'll bring mm-hmm. in a bit more. And I, I feel like almost every money problem is solved at least short term more, more, <laughs> <with more cash. laughs> more money. And I think that that is what's so neat is like on the, the personal finance side, and I'm always telling people like there's three main ways to grow your money through stock market, through real estate, and through business. Mm-hmm. And honestly, like, and I know we've, I've, you know, been in your group, but the, I have to tell you, I think that growing it through your business, if you're doing the right things is one of the smartest ways and fastest ways that you can honestly grow your wealth. So I've had clients where they had a launch and, you know, had credit card debt because we had a good system going for them, right? So we had things kind of stable over on the personal finance side. And so when they did get this big bit of cash, they knew I got my taxes taken care of on the business side, expenses, right? I know what I can invest in, you know, this program that I want to invest in or something like that. But then they were able to like just pay off debt and like one mess, they're like, I'm debt free. And do you know how neat that is just to be able to literally use the money that you've made in your business to just say debt gone. And, and I think a lot of times too, when we're thinking like, oh, I got to like, okay, I got to debt. I got to do this. I'm like, no, no, no. We got to like pay yourselves first. We got to yeah. like take care yeah. of that stuff first. Right. Yeah. But it's, it is such a really important way to be able to really build well through oh. your business. If you use it right, right. Yeah. You create a really great engine for yourself. Yeah. I love that. I love everything you're saying about this. Tell me what, or what are some of the first quick and easy things that people can do if they want to get a better grip on their business finances, what are some of the, what's like the first three things that you go, okay, do this, do this, do this. And then it'll automatically be cleaner, better. You'll feel better. You can do, like, give me the magic wand for make more money. <laughs> oh, give me the magic wand for making more money. Number one would be to put yourself on some kind of paycheck cycle yeah. where you are like, every dollar that I bring in between now and the 15th, between now and the end of the month, whatever that happens to look like for you, ideally syncing it up with maybe like if you have a partner or spouse, Mm -hmm. whatever their pay cycle might happen to be, because it'll make your personal finances so much easier because then you have this chunk of money that you're able to like kind of disperse out on the personal finance side. And promise you it's, it's a process and it makes it so much easier. Yeah. So the first thing would be get yourself on a paycheck cycle. Yeah. Um, the second thing would be really focused ahead on what do I need on the, the personal finance side and how do I make sure that I'm bringing in the sales upcoming? 
And mm. that involves things like obviously like conversions. If you're running, mm. you know, um, just having the conversations, really working on the marketing or whatever it is that you're doing in order to bring in those sales. And I know you're a really mm. big advocate for that profitable customer journey. Yeah. Something like that is yeah. exactly what you need to say. What is the quickest path for me to bring in cash? Yeah. Because I think like when we think about a business, it needs to be very cash focused, right? We need to have cash coming in. So um, I know when I'm working with my clients and we're like, we need money right away because we've got something else happening on the personal finance side. That is the number one thing of what do we do to make money? What do we do to bring in cash? And I think a lot of times we tend to procrastinate a lot on, well, I'm going to go tweak the website or I'm going to go do this. I, I've never been guilty of that ever. No. <laughs> never were guilty. No, neither so, have I. Um, hypothetical, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> totally hypothetical. But when we get into, oh my gosh, like I, I just need to like market. People need to know about what I do or just even how I like offer my services up. Then it it makes it so much easier for one people to, you know, what do they say? The quickest path to cash is through conversation. Yeah. Um, prioritizing that. And I, I think that that's where that connection of like what's happening in personal finances and how that relates to your business finances. And then another thing um, that I think would be really, really helpful is probably just on the, I mean, I'm going to kind of go with like that lead generation on the top of the funnel stuff, mm. because like creating something that is, is a much like longer lasting thing that allows your business to continue to grow that takes some of the pressure off of you on I've got to be like just like we were talking about right I got I need the cash I need like what can I do to get some quick hits we want to build something that's much more long term and that does have maybe even like some recurring revenue thrown in there too yeah yeah I want to I have questions about all three of these things so <laughs> number <laughs> number one you said uh, the first thing we need to do. Oh gosh, now it's out of my head. What was the first thing? The paycheck that we the need. Paycheck. Paychecks. The paycheck. Mm-hmm. That's right. The paycheck. So important. Um, yeah. Is it um, in Australia when? Uh, so I have my business is a PTY Limited, which I think you guys call it an L- LLC. 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 Yes, mm-hmm. LLC. It's a business. It's a it's a it's a sure. freestanding legal entity that is not me. I am a director. exactly. I am a director in that business. Yes. I pay myself a salary as an employee Mm -hmm. of the business. Shine and Succeed employs me as Mm -hmm. the CEO. So I pay myself a salary the same way I pay my my team members' salaries. Love that. And I am not, um, I am taxed on my salary as an employee. Mm -hmm. And then I take profit from the business and put that in a profit account, and then I pay tax from the profits, right? So is it the same in the US? Because I know I've spoken to some of my friends over there. And do you guys have a different way that you're taxed if you pay yourself and you're the owner of the business? There's a few different ways that you can be structured as a business you could be structured as a sole proprietor, mm-hmm. which means that you're essentially like one of the same. You say yeah. you share the same social security number. Which is what um, I suggest everyone starts as. I started as a sole trader as well. Oh, yeah. I don't know okay. what's better it, or worse in the US, but it kind of goes with liability, right? Like that yeah. would probably be more of like a lawyer right. question in terms yeah. of like what's your liability? Yeah. How are you going to be structured? Yeah. But if you're an LLC, generally, then it's like you are different, but you don't have to be, you're not really like an employee of your business oh, okay. at all. You're considered a member and, and, but you still kind of operate that way, but then you can also be like a, a true corporation, mm. which would be no different than say like, um, I don't know, like Microsoft or something yeah, like that, yeah, right? Yeah. Like a corporation. And then you become an employee, but you can also do other categorizations like uh, taxes mm-hmm. and S-Corp where you are an employee. So it gets, mm-hmm. it does get complicated okay. from there. But the, so your taxes will be sort of based off of however you are structured, but you want to be mindful of you have like the business taxes, mm. but then also in that sometimes can be one of the same, depending yeah, on. Yeah, because that's what I, because I've heard, I've heard some friends in the US talk about how they, like they don't want to pay themselves because then they pay tax twice. Um, and I didn't, maybe I, you know, maybe I'm opening a kind of worms here that we shouldn't be opening, <laughs> but, but I was, I was confused by that because they go, well, I don't pay tax twice. I pay tax as an employee. It's my employee tax. Right. 
Um, yeah. And I pay t- business tax on profit, but I don't view that as being t- paying twice. But I've I've heard some friends in the US say they don't, they're hesitant to pay themselves because they don't want to mm-hmm. pay tax twice. So I just wanted to, like, is that a thing or am I misunderstanding? It always to- it's totally, it's totally, totally a thing. I think that it's always a good idea to like bring in a tax strategist, at least yeah. here yeah. in the US, because then you can kind of figure out how you should even be structured altogether. And I think my general view on it is that like, if you're paying taxes, that means that you're making money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah, and yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like you could just yeah. make more money and then pay yeah. the taxes and have a tax strategy yeah. just to help you get that bill down. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. We don't want to pay more, yeah. but it's, it would be something that I personally don't really shy away from. And, and mm. I think like, if you read, I, I'm sure you have like the book, um, profit first by Michael yeah, I Calloway. I run my, like, I run my business profit first. Yeah. Like it's just the percentages. Right. And I think if you just like, okay, I'm going to set aside that money and just don't even act like it's yours yeah. and get rid of it. Like, I feel like when I pay myself, I'm already like getting rid of it every single mm-hmm. month. So mm-hmm. that way it's not in my accounts. It's just getting paid. It's like very, very no minimal fuss with it. And, um, it's just a way of life. Right. And I yeah. just kind of see what's going on, but I'm, I'm thrilled because when I see like the profit and like, mm. Good problem to have. Yeah, that's my take on it. Because otherwise, it's like it's kind of like that scarcity, right? Well, I I love that you've said that because I, the number of times I've heard people say I'm I'm hesitant to pay myself because I'm going to pay tax twice. Now I can say that's bullshit. Just yeah. get a tax. Go to a tax lawyer. Get your tax figured out and pay yourself. Yes, yes. And there are so many things you can do to even like structure. Where you could do like a solo four hundred one k. You could do a step IRA just to like literally make those decisions of mm. how do I get that down? But a tax strategist knows all of that. So yeah, you don't even need yeah. to worry. That's not your job to yeah. <laughs> keep up I'm, with the I'm IRS. So, I'm so thing. glad I asked you that because I've always like exited the conversation when I hear people say that because because yeah. in Australia it's structured different and I've never yeah. had that issue, but uh, now I know. So now I'm going like, to like, oh, it's just, <laughs> just talk to the tax people. Okay, so number it's one... Called, is, it's called tax sheltering. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know. Number one, pay yourself. What was number two again? Oh my gosh. Um, uh, <laughs> n- number two We're going to have to come up with this. <laughs> uh, what was it? So, Are we both having short um, Number two was it is it is on um making sure that you're paying yourself enough and that maybe that we're focusing on the right number. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't I'm, know. I'm I don't thinking know. of I'm thinking of like the sales, right? Yeah. Because we want to be really mindful of the fact of um, the amount that we need, especially on the personal finance side, right? Like right. I was working with someone and she we would, you know, work on her finances and she paid herself weekly. And we could see that there were certain weeks where she just had like every single bill possibly due during that one week, but yeah. because she was paying herself weekly and everything we we're doing, um, we needed to really look ahead mm-hmm. and see like, what is happening? What do you need coming up? And how do we actually bring that money in through your marketing, through uh, her sales? Right. And we yes. would make sure that she yeah. had enough yeah. Um, you know, for her appointments to be able to meet what she needed a week later on the personal finance side. Yeah. And, and I think that that's like so, so important that communication yeah. between the business and personal finances and not operating like they're yeah. just two, like two things out in La La Land. Yeah. Separate I, I remember it, what it is that I wanted to ask you about that because mm-hmm. there's a phase in everyone's business. And I see this, I, I almost see this in my business. I have a lister and I have the launch lounge, right? And mm-hmm. I feel like the students we the students we have in Alister is when you're when you're in Alister you're in that newbie phase you're in that kind of throwing spaghetti on the wall to see if it sticks phase right and I remember when I was in that phase it frustrated me when I heard people say know what's working and do more you know know what's working and just if you know if you know how much money you need then just sell more of the thing and i go i don't even know what sells yet how am i supposed to like do more yeah. of what's working and what i do want to say is i think there's um i think that's why it's important that's why i encourage the a listers over and over and over it's just take action take action make offers make offers make offers make offers do not rebrand do not have more photos taken do not do your website over don't do mm-hmm. any of that. Don't invest in Kajabi or other expensive <laughs> yeah. fancy platforms that you do not need until you are rolling in dough. 
Um, Mm -hmm. Like get by on what's scrappy and just make offers. And that is a space where hustle is totally okay. And Mm -hmm. you need to hustle your little heart out and you need to do like stick to the same thing and do it a few times and until you can find that thing that works and until you can refine the thing that works. And then when the students move to the launch lounge, I always say to them, now we're at the adults table, right? Because Mm -hmm. now we have something that's working. We have, now we just have to collect data on that thing and then be able to see, okay, if I run it this way, this is what happens. So let me run it this way with a small tweak and see if I can change it a little bit and make more money and track the data and get it done. And then you do it again and you do it again. And I feel like that's how you get to a place where you go, okay, I have this offer and this offer is working. I I need money coming up in my personal finances because my uh-huh. kid's starting private school next year. What can I sell more of today in order to release the cash to pay a whole year of private school up front? You know? Right. It really is that easy though. Yeah. It really is. In well, my it's opinion. Simple. It's it's that mm-hmm. simple. <laughs> yeah, it's, maybe yeah. it's not easy, but yeah. it's simple. It's not easy, <laughs> it's simple. It's very simple, but we tend to overcomplicate it, right? Mm-hmm. And oh, we, tend, we tend to get sidetracked with the squirrel. The shiny object, it's like, oh yeah, let me have some new website design and let me rebrand and all these things, right? Right. I, I do think that it is scary putting yourself out there. Oh, and yeah. the, sometimes that, what is that called? Like, it's like a form of procrastination where you're still working, but you're procrastinating on other things. You're like, let me watch this YouTube video or something on yeah. like, how do I code something that I don't need right now? Um, I, I, I think that that's what is, the the hardest thing when it comes to even the finances in general on the business side is that we have to take it almost at a very, very different level of let's pretend that you are the breadwinner and you're yeah. the person that's in charge of this. You are a person that's in charge of lead generation. You're the per- you're literally the CMO, the CFO, the you know, you've seen those reels before where they're like, I'm the coder, I'm the yes, website designer, yes, I'm the yes. everything. But I think when you think about it as like your job, like it or not, is the CFO, what would you do every single day if you only had a finite amount of hours in order to extract the most amount of money from your business? And when you answer like you go off with that question, and I know I ask that a lot of uh, people that are in small business position, what what would go, what would stay? And I I can tell you from even like my own personal experience, um, because what I'm always thinking of when it comes to business finances, we're worried about burnout, which is a huge huge problem for finances, personal and business, obviously. Um, so burnout. We're worried about lead generation because if we're always trying to target the same warm audience that we've been targeting on the same thing, it's it doesn't harder. work. Right. It doesn't work. It gets old. You, you know, yeah. it's harder and harder to get the conversions that you're looking yeah. for. And then we're also um just really focused on what do we need to do in order just to make sure that the the money is still coming in. How are you spending your time? Are you, you know, like are you working on the things that actually allow you to shine? in your business, which brings in the money. And I can tell you, you know, like I said, from my personal experience, when I'm in a content creation and I'm like working on a program or whatever, do you know, it always takes a backseat, like hundred percent of the time from a risk perspective, it's my marketing. And Uh, one of the things that I've identified as a risk factor is that I know I'm going to get busy. I know that there's going to be days where, you know, things are going on in my personal life. Or I, you know, just like really involved with a project, whether Mm. for a corporate client or for one of my businesses, if I let the marketing go, then I can guarantee you that it's going to impact my finances in the future. I don't even have to guess. I'm like, I can plot it out. That's what I think has been so amazing about Facebook ads Mm. too. And from like that risk mitigation perspective is that it's working 24 seven for me when I'm doing something else. Right. I'm not even there. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. My list is still growing. My Instagram's growing. Um, and the business is so much healthier. There are sales coming in from something that I'm not even a part of. And whenever I can remove myself financially from something, it's better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it sounds so funny, right? <laughs> yeah. Better yeah no, from a risk 
It is. And you have done a great job with your ads and with your with your offers and with your webinars and everything you've just done. Is I don't think so. I, I always say, no, I always say this and I'm a hundred percent true. Like I am a one trick pony when it comes to my Facebook ads. I know oh, how to run like great one thing. ad. I only need to know one ad. And that's what I would say to everybody. Just, just like nail that one ad. And you can run that for days and days. Especially, especially learned that trick from, from the, from the show ponies. That's why. <laughs> so there's hope for everybody (laughs) there's hope for everybody yeah I want to kind of wrap this up on something that you just said gosh my short-term memory really is going I think I'm starting early menopause um (laughs) you said something a while ago about if you if your sole job in your business every day was to show up and extract as much money as you can from your business, what would you be doing? Say that Me personally? Again. No, sir, I want you to, I, oh. I just like, no, I want, well, maybe, yes, start by answering. Uh, I was like, like, I want to sit in that because like, I want to go and uh, like percolate in that question because I feel I need to, per- that's, that's like, oh, snap. Yeah. Well, so this came about for me personally, when I realized that for, and I think the life as an entrepreneur, right. You're like, I can do this. Oh my God, I have this other idea. Let me go work on this. Right. And next thing you know, you've added hours and hours to your week. Mm-hmm. And then you turn around, look at it and you're like, I've been doing this for months, for years. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. honestly, no let up. And I heard it from, I forget. I wish I knew who it was, but I heard it from someone that said, what if you only had like six hours a day? Mm-hmm. And six hours a day to really work on your business. I can tell you, first of all, that brings on a lot of like, oh my gosh, six hours a day, right? But immediately you could start rattling off. If you knew you only had six hours, Mm -hmm. like there are a lot of things that would go for sure. Or I'd hire it out or I'd delegate it or I just not do it anymore, right? I would just like, we're done with that. But the things that I would do, if I needed to be in the position of like, we've got to extract this, as much money as possible from the business, I would be hundred percent in, I'd be online. I'd be doing my marketing. I'd be in Facebook ads manager. I would be much more on those things, working on my conversions Mm. and really trying to um, make sure that that really get the bulk of my time. And, And I'll tell you from a finance perspective, I actually put that on myself of, um, because when I get so busy with my own, like creating a course and that stuff takes so much time to do Um, I've actually put it like, I've got to spend a certain amount of hours per week working on marketing in some way, shape or form to ensure the longevity of the business and all the things that I want to do with it. And, and when I think of it that way, that means a lot of other things have to go. And I, I would really encourage anybody to think about that. If you only had a couple of hours a day to work on your business, truly, like I'm talking like hardcore, like thinking work, um, what what would you do? Where where would be the best use of your time? So when I worked with other people, they're like, I should be out buying fabric. That's their thing that they really, really shine at at for their particular business. Um, it would be getting out and doing the podcast yeah. for their business. For others, it might be social media. For me, as the introvert, I'm like 100%. I'm an ads manager, like I said, mm-hmm. <laughs> and trying to tweak that stuff. Um, but I just think that it's so, so important to kind of know that. And I think that fits in really well with what you're talking about with like the customer profitable journey Mm -hmm. for me, I know what my customer profitable, I'm mixing that up. My profitable customer journey is. And so for that, that kind of dictates a lot of my own marketing activities, right. For those just few hours that I have per week to work on that. And it's going with that question really makes me also say no to a lot more things Mm. and put that pressure on myself of like, no, like we need to end this. And Mm. how do we, you know, get there? And I think hiring a VA that's like, this is your schedule now. (laughs) It's been amazing (laughs) for the boundaries. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. You know, you talk about working six hours a week. I work six hours a day, a day, a day, a day. Yes, it's, it's I, progress, um, right? It's progress. It's progress. Six, six hours. Six, I six, if I had to work six hours a week, I would, I would blow my brain. What would you do? I'd be so bored. I would be so bored. I'm not okay, but with then, boredom. See, but but go with what would you do? Like, what would you do in your business? <laughs> oh, if I okay, have something if fun to I do, I you're so creative. Worked, if I only worked six hours a week. 
I would spend, ah, that's a good question. There's the two, the two things that light me up is coaching people, mm-hmm. answering questions for my students and creating content for my students. Um, not for, not none of those content. make money. <laughs> they do, but they don't. Do you see what I'm saying? From yeah, like a long-term financial saying. plan. I, I know that's what, that's what's get hard, hard, right? But you know, but you know what I have, I look at, I look at someone like Brooke Castillo, right? Mm-hmm. And Brooke is incredibly talented at making money, but she doesn't run her business. She's not the CEO of her business. And I aspire to getting to a place where I have built the business well enough. I have the knowledge to build and grow the business well enough, but I don't have to be the CEO. I can be the person doing... I genuinely, I actually have this, I I have this sort of, I'm going... Well, if the things that light me up the most is coaching students and creating content, right. like right. you say, neither of those two things are marketing and sales. Right. <laughs> um, I have a problem. <laughs> but do you know what's so great about that is you might not have to be that person. And I would encourage everybody to think about that. And because yeah. I know I've thought about that too. I'm like, okay, well, if I'm not doing marketing and sales, it's not my most favorite thing to do who else could do it for me? And exactly. I love where you're going yeah. with that. Yeah. Right. Like maybe yeah. you don't want to be the CEO. Maybe you're just like, yeah. I want to be the chief creative officer right. of this yeah. thing. And that's yeah. where I really bring in yeah. like customers and like they, right. they kind of yeah. know all of that and like leave all the other, you know, CEO type stuff, CFO stuff yeah. to somebody else yeah. altogether. You, need, and- you still need to be the keeper of the big picture. You know, the other people, you can have a CFO and a COO and a CEO and all those, you still have to be the key visionary and the person who understands which are the important levers that needs pulling in order to reach more of your ideal customers and convert more of your ideal customers and serve more of your ideal. Those are the three, you know, I feel like... Mm -hmm. We need to, uh, if, if, if I, so, so let's go back. If I had to work six hours a week, I would have, there's, this is the three things that mm-hmm. need to do. I need to, in that six hours, do reach more of my ideal customers. I'd probably use ads and pay my team to do that. I already do. Right. And it's automated. Box. It's so automated. automated. Yeah, it's right. and I have the best ads team in the world. Exactly. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I can check that off of my box. So that wouldn't have to go into my six hours. Um, convert more is my job. Conversion in my business is my job solely at this stage uh, because I do it really well. And because I love doing it, I actually do love like the A-lister webinar. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get to put feathers on and entertain people in my <laughs> I love that you're in your element. Yeah. And and serve more people. That's like that's my jam. That's what I love. I just you know how I love. I'm an introvert. So don't give me social media. Give me a Zoom call with a student oh, any day. Right. Um, so this sounds like you got a perfect week then lined I, up. I, maybe I've already created, but I do want to say, like last year before I had my little breakthrough breakdown, breakthrough. Um, I was working, I had team issues that I had to fix, you know, hiring people, hiring the wrong people, hiring people in the wrong positions. I was working 12 hours a day. And what I can say in hindsight is uh, what I didn't know then is it's not as simple as just cutting back your hours. If you have a systemic problem, I had a systemic problem then. I have fixed the systemic problem to the degree that I, you know, to, to a large degree, I fixed the systemic problem. It meant I had to say no to new clients in the agency. It meant that I had to reshuffle everything, all my priorities. But now I genuinely work six hours a day, but I have nine people on my team. Mm -hmm. And so I have replaced those hours with other people, which brings about you know, a new responsibility because now I'm responsible for nine other people's mortgages, Um, Mm -hmm. which means now I take sales very seriously. (laughs) Right. No, a hundred percent. I think that that's, that really does shift the responsibility. Like it frees up other things, but it also creates that, the, the, that's something else that you have to really be focused on. Mm -hmm. And I think some people really love it. And some people are like, ah, I I think it's 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 a better quality problem, right? It is, but it's really important to know yourself Mm. on, and like, what are those like risks 
that could potentially come up if I'm not that person or mm. I'm I'm not wearing that hat enough. Mm. And how does that impact other people within mm. that and like where I spend my time and whatnot? Yeah. Because I I you know especially like as a, I'm pretty much like a solopreneur over here. I yeah. have the VA, yeah. but I think it's just really really obvious for me for other solopreneurs that I work with. That when we take our eye, we get too much into our work and we take our eye off of lead generation or we take our eye off of, you know, the social media or, you know, we Mm. get into burnout or other things Mm. that really, really impacts the finances. And I think if I could say anything, it would be really be mindful of knowing yourself and where potential risks might be or challenges that you could foresee because this is so important. Like this is your personal finances. And when you don't feel good about those, it really impacts the energy of your entire business, your creative, the right. all yeah. of the really fun things that make you, you, and that yeah. special sauce that you bring to your business, it weighs it all down, which hurts right. your finances. Right. Yeah, exactly. And so I think that's why I'm like so protective of that with my clients mm-hmm. of, okay, but like, we can't, we can't work that much or we can't, um, we need to be charging the right amount for what you're doing because you can't literally take on more creative work right now. This is your cap. And I can't get you into burnout because then you're not going to want to work and yeah. our sales plummet. And, you know, it just kind of goes yeah. on and on and on. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I think it's so, so important to know yourself and what you're willing to do or not do and set in those protocols. So that mm. way you're protected either way. Yeah. Keep the revenue what, going. what lights, what lights you up and what drains mm-hmm. you? Cause yeah. yeah. I love that. I love that you are a finances person and you get that. Because mm-hmm. that's what it's about. That's the heart of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right it is. Course. It is. And it can be so fun. It, it really can. It is. I could talk to you for days and days. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you so much for sharing your Darcy magic with us. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. And like I said, I think that it's been um, just so, so amazing to learn from you and for the others that don't know Salome in the same way that I've had the opportunity to learn from her and the launch lounge. She is so freaking brilliant with the strategy. And I know she's personally pushed me when it comes to what I've done within my business and sometimes uncomfortably, (laughs) but it's been the most rewarding thing for me personally, professionally, financially. And I, I, I'm just so, so indebted to all of the, the amazing mentorship that you brought in. And I know you've also helped other people within the launch lounge too, and certainly A-listers as well. Oh, thank you so much. It's, it's, I'm, I'm honored to be part of your journey. Where can people learn more about you and about both of your courses? Yeah, so you can visit my website at greenbitesproject.com, all one word. And then I'm also on Instagram most days. I try to be there. Um, I'm at greenbitesproject. It's over there. That's fantastic. I would encourage anyone to go and hang out with Dorse on Instagram and check out her, um, her website. Her course for personal finances is on Evergreen. So you can get it today. Get yes. started today, and then uh, and then her business course. Uh, we will let you know when that opens up again. Go check out Dorsey. Thank you so much, Dorsey. Thank you. Have a good day. If you loved this episode and you're a committed online course launcher who wants to learn how to grow your profits in your next course launch, and you want to know how to successfully scale your online courses business to seven figures and beyond then I'd love to see you inside the Launch Lounge. The Launch Lounge is the only community online that is dedicated solely to helping you develop every aspect of your online courses business so that you can build your business to scale. With no one-size-fits-all solutions, just the right education you need when you need it, coaching from our team of experts in different areas of launching and scaling, and the best community on the internet, the Launch Lounge, is your online course building home if you want profitable launches that scale your business to seven figures and beyond. To get on the waitlist for our next enrollment season, go to shineandsucceed.com forward slash launch.
Thank you so much for listening. If you had fun, please come back next week and remember to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a thing.